Hi guys, so I'm here with Matthew Lone Bear. Um, we came to support Matthew and his family um, in the search for their sister and daughter, Olivia Lone Bear. So I just wanted to start out. Um, first, can you hear me? Okay. Okay, so um, it's a really hard thing to experience um, this uh, from the family's perspective. Um, I, the feelings that I have about this are really nothing in comparison to what their family is going through. So we showed up to just offer support in whatever way we can, we can. and we're doing that by sharing this information. Uh, the family has created an Amazon wish list for supplies that they need. They've uh, got some other things that I do live feed. So if you could share this live feed in all of your networks, everybody push share. We're gonna get this information out there. Um, so the thing is that, you know, as, as Indian women, we're just not, we're not valuable in this society. We don't matter. Our lives are, are we don't matter. Um, we go missing, we get murdered service. Um, the, the response by the police when, a, when an Indian woman goes missing is completely different than if it were a white woman that goes missing. Um, there are teams out searching, there are, there's so much public awareness, the media responds whenever it's a white woman. But an Indian sister goes missing, you don't hear about it. You don't, you don't hear about it on the media. You, the police respond completely different in a different timeline. They have different limitations in what they'll do and how much they'll do because we just are not valuable human beings. And that, that's the message that is being taught to us by the, their actions. So um, even at, you know, in the bigger picture of missing and murdered indigenous women, um, there are, we're not tracked. The statistics are not tracked. There are no numbers. There are, you, know, you can't look that up and find out accurate information because we are not valuable. We, uh, and, and all of this, the reason why I say this is because this is, this is what America is telling our predators. The predators that are actively hunting us, they're telling them that it's okay, that you can murder indigenous women, you can steal them, and you won't have consequences. You won't face any repercussions. Nobody's gonna look for you. Nobody's gonna hunt you down and find these women. So, so that's the messaging that is coming whenever the police don't respond, when the media doesn't respond. And it's time to say no more. It's time to say no more. Our women are valuable. Our sisters, our mothers, our daughters, our nieces, we're valuable. And it's time to change that messaging. It's time for, we, we, we can't wait for the, for the authorities anymore to say, to acknowledge us as human beings to say that we're valuable. We as Indian people and, and the allies that support us, we have to say we are valuable. Our women are valuable. And we're gonna say no more. We're gonna hunt you down and we're gonna find you. And we're gonna have, we're gonna bring our sisters home. We're gonna have justice for them because we matter and they matter. It's up to us, the people, to create this change. The people have to stand up and to say no more. We do a lot of fighting for the earth, for the environment, and you know, this is all tied together. This is, you know, the, uh, the pipeline fights, the oil industry. They create these man camps that's, you know, that's not spoken loud enough, often enough about how the, you know, when, with these pipelines come these man camps, and there are statistics out there. You want you you can't find statistics on us, but you can you can look up. There's like a, an article in 2013 that that um, 
gives, you know, that validates that with the incoming of man camps into these communities, the level of crime rises, the level of uh, missing and murdered indigenous women rises. You can't find exact numbers, but you can get that fact in that statistic. Um, so, you know, we have to, I get, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm reading from my notes here, but you know, we just, I want to talk, these are just general things that I'm saying, but there are, you know, they're related to the specific search for Olivia because after talking with the family, they have endured so much. Um, and I just, you know, ask that you all pray for them and listen to the information that we're going to continue to provide here, share this in your, in your networks, because uh, I'm going to, I don't want to speak for the family. I'm going to turn it over to, to Matthew here, and I'm going to ask him some questions, ask him to speak for his sister, for his mother, for their family, for her children. Um, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn it around now. Hi, Matthew. Hi. Thank you for doing this. I know this is a really hard, hard thing for you to do. So if you could just give us um, just a brief, some brief information on Olivia, the circumstances, the last date she was not seen. Um, the updated information that we found in that investigation is that uh, she was going west of Newtown on October 25th at around about 9 p.m. or so, give or take, um, approximately around 9 p.m. I'm going to come just a little closer so I can, we can hear you. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I, can, oh, yeah, I can project a little better, okay. too. Um, but she was seen going west on Main Street, Newtown, on a camera. Um, you know, that's the, that's the last known video footage that we've found so far. Um, you know, uh, we had Standing Rock Sioux Tribe come through, and uh, they brought 10 men. And, uh, yeah, they, they covered a lot of ground. They bought ATVs, and, uh, you know, I just want to, again, you know, thank them for, for showing, showing up and showing support. And, you know, they're pretty, pretty classy natives there. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess. So I'm going to take it back here just for a second because some of the, the things that concern me are that they have put up posters in, in all of the local communities um, and I was really shocked to hear that in some of, I won't name which communities, but in some of the local communities they, were, they refused to allow them to put up posters in their towns and these are also some of the, the towns where the the police forces haven't responded, haven't been supportive. And so, um, you know, this is again, just bringing back attention to why not? Why can't I put a, pic a poster of my missing sister in, in this gas station? Why not? It seems as a human, you would want to help this family find their sister. And so, you know, these are just the things that we deal with as, as Indian people. Um, I heard a story about another man who was not who was not Indian that, that passed away in, in, a, in a local area um, over the summer and the search was intense for him and you know now a few months later Olivia is missing and there hasn't there hasn't been any boats with sonar going through the through the water every police force should have access to a boat that has sonar equipment that they can in depth uh, capability where they can patrol they can patrol all the waterways they can search into the water and all of these these waterways should have already been covered but they haven't there's still opportunity to do that but we've got about a week to two two and a half weeks before the water freezes here so it's time to call you know cuz i don't know anybody that has a boat with sonar Capabilities. I don't know anybody that has, you know, all of this equipment. I know that they do. I know that they can offer that support. That they can be more thorough. They should be more thorough in what they're what they're doing for the family. In the caption of this live feed, I have um, listed some agencies that have not offered support yet. 
that I would like you to, to call starting tomorrow morning. Ask them bad connection. But uh, tomorrow morning I want you to, to, to find the number in the caption of this live feed. I'll try to post it also as, a, as an individual post on my page, but um, call these police agencies and ask them to send out their boats to look for Olivia. The boats with the sonar capabilities, with the depth perception capabilities, because the water is going to be freezing soon and we don't have much time. So all of that information is in there. And we also, um, some of the things that the family has created an Amazon wish list, and you, that is also in the caption. I've got like the world's longest caption in this live feed, but all of that, all of that information is in there. So after you, you know, after you watch this and you share it, then you can go there and you can find that information. Um, there's a PayPal. Um, there has been word of some crowdfunding that has been happening for Olivia. Um, the family is saying that there's only one PayPal and that is the one that is in my caption and that's the only source that they're getting funding from or any support. So um, go to that PayPal if you want to help them. They do have a need for supplies um, and that is the, a lot of those supplies are on their Amazon wish list. You can go ahead and take a look at that. If you can't get here physically, if you can't be here, um, that's okay. There are other, there's a lot of other ways to, to show support. Um, you can share this information, you can go onto the Amazon website, you can look at their wish list, you can um, donate to their PayPal. The, we're also calling out to, because this is and it, uh, uh, this is an Indian issue. This is something that affects every reservation, every, you know, all of our Indian women. In Pine Ridge, there are women missing. In, you know, every reservation, we have this issue. So it, it affects all of us. And um, so I, I want to call out to all of our brothers and sisters of whatever nation you are living in and ask that if you can to arrange a caravan the family has gas cards they can get you here they have lodging and they have meals provided at the um, headquarter center so if you can round up some people this is uh, you know us supporting each other us helping hold each other up us helping find Olivia and, and to support this family However long you can be here for, whether it be a day or several days, the family has, um, again, gas cards to get you here, um, lodging for you to sleep at night, and then they have meals in the command center. So um, if you can, in your community, arrange a caravan of people, because we really need, the family really needs, Body, uh, boots on the ground. There are a million acres of land on this reservation that need to be canvassed. They have covered a lot of area, but um, to my knowledge, not not as thoroughly as they would like. They they need they just need more people, and it's getting colder, and the snow is going to be coming. Things are going to be freezing. The water's definitely freezing. Another immediate um, need, if you have the capability to provide, would be a DJI Mavic drone so that they can use the drone to um, canvas areas and, and search for her. So the drone is immediate, um, caravans of search part people, able-bodied um, people that can come and join the search to canvas people, or can, I'm sorry, message coming in, <laughs> um, distracting me. Um, we just need people to canvas a million acres of reservation land. And so, um, let me make sure, and then call the local surrounding police agencies that I have listed in the caption. And um, I wanna talk about, I'm gonna ask um, Matthew to talk about the truck that she was last seen in, um, just to kind of give that description. That is also in the caption, the description of the truck. Um, and then if there's anything else that he wants to say, I'm just checking my notes. I think that's about it for me. 
but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and let Matthew finish up here but thank you all for watching please share this video please do what you can to help okay the I'm sure they got the license plate um, on there it's, I can't mm -hmm. remember That's it okay. offhand it's kind of dys dyslexic like that but uh uh, that's a, a 2011 um, teal Silverado on 2500. Um, it does got a dent in the tailgate, or not tailgate, the back bumper. There's a dent there, and there's also missing its rear view mirror, um, you know, in the, mm -hmm. in, inside the cab. So those are two other features that, that are on this truck. Um, and the toolbox. And there's a silver toolbox on it. Um, yeah, that's... I guess basically up for the truck, but uh, one thing that I want to mention too is that the Bakken is a huge place, and that it's not we're, we're focusing on the reservation right now. But there, you know, the Bakken is bigger than this reservation. Um, you know, Wofford City um, Police Department, uh, Mackenzie County Police Department did. You know, I hear that they're doing a really thorough job in searching, and I just want to you know acknowledge that. Um, oh, here you go. Thank you. Uh, the license plate for it is 839BRC. It's a North Dakota license plate. Again, that's 839BRC. Um, just a little bit about Olivia, too. You know, she's 5'6", 130 pounds, uh, brown shoulder length hair, um, brown eyes, age, she's 32 years old. Um, scars and marks, uh, she has a scar on her right front shoulder, a scar in one of her palms, a J and butterfly tattoo behind her right ear, and a IXXIMMXI tattoo on her right arm, a lone bear tattooed on her left forearm, and Haley tattooed on her right ankle. Um, just a little information about what, what, you know, her tattoos and stuff. Um, you know, like getting back to what I was saying, um, the, the Bakken is a really big area. You know, we we live here, we know like all the horror stories of the Bakken. And, um, you know, we, we're doing everything that we can to bring bring Olivia home. Um, and, you know, I appreciate, the family appreciates that everyone's taking out, you know, time and, you know, thinking about us and saying prayers and uh, getting their own PDs involved. Uh, another uh, Roosevelt County Police, or Roosevelt County De um, Sheriff's Department um, showed up, and they were a really good um, ally to the search. Um, kind of got our local PD into gear, kind of got them in the right mindset. Um, and uh, one thing I just want to touch upon too is that uh, we know that there's, there needs to be a policy change locally, and we are working with the police department on that. Um, you know, so we got off to a slow start in this search as far as that goes. But, you know, with that said, uh, you know, I've been reading in the comment sections too that there's like animosity in there. And um, the thing is like, we all got to work together in order to bring Olivia home regardless of the situation. So um, I guess that's kind of, I just want to touch base on that, I guess. Mm -hmm. But um, And then the reward. Oh yeah. And yeah. the update tomorrow, or release. Okay. Um, there, there is a ten thousand dollar reward um, for any information that brings her home, and or the conviction of the people that might be responsible for her disappearance. Um, the official flyer for that will be out tomorrow. Um, then the other, the other part of it was uh, uh, we are going to have a, a what do you call it again? Public, we'll have a public statement put out mm -hmm. tomorrow um, that's kind of touches, touches upon uh, Standing Rock and them coming to help us this weekend and putting a call out for more people because we do need more people to cover the ground more thoroughly. Um, we do need you know sonar capabilities. And there's a lot of water around here, so um, having that at, at, our, at our own discretion would be a lot easier than trying to bring a department in that only can be here for two days and they got to leave again. Mm -hmm. You can't canvas this place, or the water part of it, in two days. Um, so, I don't know. I think, that, I think that's, a, that's a really good point to make because, 
even uh, the police departments that have responded um, are, you know, have, it's been, uh, you know, like under, it's been short, very short term. Mm -hmm. so, so in a short amount of time, there's only so much you can do and it, it's not been very thorough. Mm -hmm. So if there are, I mean, we should definitely um, put pressure on the law enforcement to the surrounding law enforcement to respond with their equipment mm -hmm. um, and to also be more thorough to spend more time um, and to to uh, I guess just be more thorough but if someone out there knows if you know somebody or if you have some of this equipment on your own that you could lend or you know bring so mm -hmm. that we're not on the timeline of, of, of a police force coming in and, and on their timeline of looking because there is so much water to search. Um, so I, you know, I know a lot of people out there that will hopefully be tuning in. So I'm asking if, if you have that capability, if you have this equipment and you can come and you can uh, either, you know, just lend it to the family or come and operate it and, you know, volunteer some time, that that would be amazing. Um, and then also, do you, what do you think about, I mean, could you speak on the public awareness? We're wanting people, we're doing this because we want people to know that the search is still very active. Yep. And can you respond to some of the mis misleading information that the search is over? Uh, yeah, uh, I actually stopped on the gas station the other day, actually, and I heard, you know, I heard the families shutting down the search because of no funding or something, you know, and I was like, no, we are still searching. We, you know, we're, we're out there, we're, you know, out in the cold, flying drones and doing every, whatever we can as, as a search party to get out there and find uh, Olivia. Um, one thing that um, for local people that, that see us out, uh, if we're out, you know, we got got the vests on and stuff. Uh, we usually got an orange vest. Uh, this is the one I had available to me, so that's what I'm wearing. But um, when we're out there, we also have a, a red ribbon on here. You know, someplace on us there'll be a red ribbon, but that's to differentiate us from hunters. Um, just to let let the landowners know that that we're out there. And also, another thing that we're doing is marking our vehicles with ribbons as well. Um, whether it's on your mirror or on your, on your antenna, we'd like to see people that are aware of um, the situation and if they can ha tie, tie a red ribbon onto their vehicle so, so the, the word gets out about this because, like I said, the Bakken is a big area and it would show, you know, People will be asking why there's red ribbons everywhere, and like it would keep get, and they keep it keep it out there for us. Keep it fresh in people's minds. Yep, because this is a very real situation. We're out here every day. This is uh, our 22nd day on the search. You know, it's been quite a while. So, and we got to find that vehicle. You know, like that. That's number one because that's going to put us. You know, um, near where. Where, where did she go after after that that last uh, video you know so um, that, that that'll put us in the right area that'll you know put us in contact with some more clues possibly you know so we do put a lot of emphasis on, on the truck um, you know if anybody has any information you know um, call it into our tip line if you you know got information you want to remain anonymous that we got a line for that too um, Yes, so, so just uh, I want to thank everyone for um, for thinking of us again, and um, you know, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Matt. Okay, so let me see your ribbon. So again, um, I just wanted to show this ribbon again. This is it's just a red ribbon, but um, the family is asking the family is asking that we all get a red ribbon, tie it onto your vehicle somewhere and in this way we're speaking Olivia's name in this way we're carrying Olivia with us and the message um, that we're still looking for her that we're still um, that this is still active that uh, that she matters and so if you could all do that we would like to see red ribbons everywhere um, and so that is the request of the family and 
Also, you know, just again to reiterate that we are valuable. Our lives matter. There are five babies that miss their mama right now. And a whole family that, that is, is lonesome for her, that is worried about her. And this is, this is only one of our beautiful women that is missing. There are thousands. And you all know those stories. You all, you all know that you carry those stories. We carry those stories. And so we, you know, we, it's important to talk about how the responses by the, by the police agencies, by the government, by, by all these people that are supposed to care about us, that are supposed to protect us, that are supposed to look for us and, and help find us. We, can, we should be talking about that. And we need to continue talking about that and trying to change that. But in the immediate, I mean, in the immediate now, in the here and now, all we can do as community, a com, you know, as a community, is is to take it into our own hands now. Is to help each other. Is you know, we have to make take the actions that the police won't do for us. So we have to help each other. We have to network. We have to strengthen our bonds to each other and all of our reservations, all of our nations, we have to support each other in this way. And uh, we can't wait around anymore for anybody to save us. We have to start saving each other and supporting each other. And I think that, I think that was it. Um, yeah, I think that was it. Sorry, I was just checking my notes. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and end here, share this video, and then look in the caption uh, for any of the information that's in there. I'll also share some photos of the information for, the, for, the, for any, any information that, that you, can, you can use. Um, I'll share that in a separate post. But thank you for all your support and for tuning in.